indeed, Carl Rove's emails were were uh, on that server that too. That have gone missing. They that have gone missing. Incidentally, Stephen Spoonamore, again the whistleblower, who's the one who named Connell, has uh, told us, and 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 I've seen his uh, his own contemporary notes. And explain again who he was. Why was he in a position to whistleblow? Stephen Spoonamore is a conservative Republican, a former McCain supporter, and a, and a very prominent expert at the detection of computer fraud. He's the star witness in the Ohio lawsuit, right, uh, in which Connell was involved. He has done extensive work of, of this kind involving computer security and had therefore worked with Connell, knew Connell personally, and knew a lot of the people who were involved in the sort of cybersecurity <coughs> end of the Bush operation. Despite his conservatism, or I suppose some would say because of it, he's a man of principle. I mean, he believes in the Constitution. He believes the election should be honest. He's the one who came forward and, and uh, uh, named Connell. Uh, and, and I have seen his notes uh, of a conversation in which Connell uh, asked Spoonamore how one would go about destroying White House emails. To this, Spoonamore said, this conversation's over. You're asking me to do something illegal. But clearly, clearly, this is the important point. Mike Connell was up past his eyeballs in the, the most sensitive and explosive aspects of this uh, crime and, family that, that you know has been masquerading as a political party. And what did Fitrakis, the attorney um, who has brought the suit with Harvey Wasserman, the Ohio lawsuit, learn in the deposition of Mike Connell in the day before the election, which hardly got attention considering it was a day before this historic yeah. election? Yeah, Harvey wasn't part of it. Harvey writes articles oh. with Bob. It's Bob Fitrakis and Cliff Arnebecker, the attorneys. They learned very little. What they learned was uh, that uh, uh, Bush Cheney lawyer who accompanied uh, Connell to the deposition was watching the whole thing like a hawk, uh, repeatedly objected to questions. Uh, Connell was stonewalling like crazy at this deposition. They only learned one thing, and that was they got confirmation that it was Connell who brought these other private companies into the arrangement. In addition to his own GovTech solutions, again, there was a triad and smart tech. It was Connell who brought those three companies into one unit so that the three of them were, in effect, handling Ohio's election returns on election night under Connell's supervision. That's what we learned. We also know, Amy, that since the deposition, uh, I want to make this clear. We well, said it before. I want to repeat it, that Connell has indicated very clearly a desire to talk further, to tell more, uh, whether it's his conscience bothering him, whether it's fear of, of some kind of a perjury charge because of how uh, vigorously he stonewalled at the deposition. He made it known to the lawyers. He made it known to reporter Larissa Alexandrovna of Ross Story that he wanted to talk. Uh, he was scared. He wanted to talk. And I say that he had pretty good reason to be so scared. So why did he fly? Uh, and why did he pilot his own plane when he was so afraid? Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, we can't ask him, unfortunately. Uh, some, I mean, I, this is a kind of a grisly uh, thought, but I mean, I think we should be asking where the where the body is. Uh, we're told that a trooper on the scene immediately identified Connell, but then we read elsewhere that there was nothing left but debris and that the fireball was enormous. So maybe he wasn't on the plane. I mean, who knows when you're dealing with people as uh, as deep. As these. But the point is, uh, I, I, I can't stress this strongly enough. We're dealing not just with, with was it a shocking accident, if that's what it was, and a convenient one. We're dealing not even just with uh, a particular lawsuit that, that you know, really requires a, a vigorous promotion. The important point here is that this is all about our elections. That's what this is about. This is about democratic self-government. The fact that Obama won so handily has caused a lot of us to sit back and relax. There's been a lot of popping of champagne corks and people drawing the conclusion that the system must work because our guy won. Well, this is not a sports event. This is self-government. In fact, the evidence strongly suggests, and we haven't had a chance to talk about this since Election Day, that Obama probably won by twice as many votes as we think, probably a good 7 million votes. 
for Obama were undone through vote suppression and fraud, because the stuff was extensive and pervasive, in places where you wouldn't expect it. The Illinois Ballot Integrity Project was, uh, was monitoring the vote in DuPage County, right next door to Obama's, you know, backyard, Cook County. And two of them, in only two precincts on Election Day, saw with their own eyes 350 voters show up, only to be turned away, told you're not registered, people who were registered, who'd voted in the primary. All but one of these people was black. That's, that's in Illinois. People at the Election Defense Alliance have discovered, from, from sifting through the numbers, an 11-point red shift in New Hampshire. That means that there's a discrepancy in Obama's disfavor, uh, primarily through use of the optical scan machines, an 11-point discrepancy in the Republicans' favor. Okay? You start to combine this with all the vote suppression, all the disenfranchisement, all the vote machine flipping that went on in this election, you realize, okay, Obama won. But millions of Americans, most of them African American and students, you know, were not able to participate in any civic sense. Ironically, a lot of the same people, you know, who would have been disenfranchised and were disenfranchised before the civil rights movement. So the fact that a black president was elected, while cause for jubilation, see, ought not to take place at the expense of a whole lot of our fellow citizens who seem to have been disenfranchised on racial grounds. My point is very simply this. We've got to get past the victory of Obama and look seriously at what our election system is like, or else I promise you, see, the setup that was put in place in this last election and in 2004 and in 2000, okay, will still be there in 2010, still be there in 2012. So we've got to take steps to do something about it now. Mark Crispin Miller, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Professor of Media, Culture and Communication at New York University, most recent book, Lose or Take All, Election Fraud and the Subversion of Democracy, 2000 to 2008. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, Harvard's Linda Bilmes, uh, she'll be talking about uh, the economic bailout, the $10 trillion hangover, paying the price for eight years of Bush. Stay with us.